ask Brother Colley to come and get ready this morning for a responsive reading. Amen. You want to be in his presence this morning? I tell you, he's here to meet every need. He's here to open your heart. He's here just for to us to tell him that we love him. Amen. In the presence of Jehovah, oh God Almighty, Prince of probably one of the youngins that were born after I started the church here. So, been here. I probably, she probably was on a blanket the first time I seen her wrapped up. God bless her. Happy. Let us, we're going to read this morning from 1 Timothy, second chapter. Let us, let us pray. Heavenly Father, we are grateful and thankful for this opportunity that you've given us again to come together to worship. Father, we look at the world and its condition. Lord, knowing us that it's the evening time, Lord, we rejoice. But Father, it's sad for us to see loved ones and friends, God, who are lost and we can't lead them. But Father, we pray that we will live and walk the best that we can and do the thing that you would desire for us. Lord, and lead us wherever we go and whatever we do. Father, let us present you unto the world through ourselves. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Second Timothy, the second chapter. I exhort, therefore, that first of all supplications and prayers, intercessions and giving thanks to make for all men. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of our God for our Savior, for God our Savior. Sorry. Who will have all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. 
For there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus. Who gave himself a ransom for all to be testified in due time. Wherefore, I am ordained a preacher and an apostle. I speak the truth in Christ and not and lie not, a teacher of the Gentiles in faith and verity. I will therefore the men pray everywhere, lifting up holy hands without wrath and doubt. In like manner also that women adorn themselves in modest apparel with shamefacedness and sobriety, not with braiding of the hair or gold or pearl or costly array. Let the woman learn in silence with our subjections. For Adam was first formed, then Eve. And Adam was not deceived, but the woman being deceived was in the transgression. Notwithstanding, she be saved through childbearing, in the continuance of her faith, and charity, and holiness with all severity. God bless you. You may be seated. <laughs> assurance we have to know that there's one God and there's a God that is uh, Christ Jesus the mediator between God and man amen um, brother John would you come and take up the offering this morning satisfy every desire, Lord yes, Jesus. Lord. So, Lord, we pray you bless this service, Lord. Be in our midst this morning, Lord God. Bless the worship, the service. Yes, Thanksgiving later, Father, we just want to say thank you, Lord. Yes. Bless the time in the offerings, Lord, and certainly, Lord, we pray for what comes in for a brother, Lord, on his mission trip, yes, Lord God, may Jesus. you triple-fold prosper the use of it, Father. Yes, Lord. We love you, Lord, and we thank you. We commit this service into your hands. I have quite a few specials this morning. Um, we're going to ask Sister Lily to get ready for her special. Let's sing that song, There's Honey on the Rock, My Brother in the Key of C. While she gets ready. Oh, there's honey in the rock, my brother. There's honey in the rock for you. Leave your sin. Most of the young people here went to um, the camp in South Carolina. Um, both Esther and Zach made me sign up about five months ago, <laughs> um, and I never—I had—I went to the very first camp I ever went to was in 2014, and it wasn't a very good experience. So 
but I really wanted to put myself out there because God has been really working on me the last couple months. And, um, you know, I went through a lot two years ago, and that kind of closed my heart to the things of God. And so the last six months or so, I couldn't figure out why I was so sensitive to, you know, the Word and preaching. And it's like every time I would really listen, I would just cry. <laughs> and I couldn't figure out why. But, um, you know, I... I kind of was just trying to be open to it and accepting it and just letting God work for the first time in my life that strong. Um, so during the camp, I knew like something was going to, had to happen. Um, and so that first night I was so emotional and I was like, you know, God, I'm not going to leave this camp the same. I knew it. But um, the Saturday night, um, something was just, the atmosphere when we walked in was just different. And so I knew, like, I was so determined, because um, I knew I needed the Holy Ghost. I was so determined, I told, my, I told God, I'm not leaving this service without it. <laughs> and so, uh, like, they had a prayer line, and I knew I wanted to be, that, like, within the first three people <laughs> in that prayer line. But, um, you know, I, I sat there for about an hour just praying and feeling exhausted. And by the end of it, I knew I had it. So I just wanted to give that, <laughs> that testimony of that. Jesus, falling in love with Jesus, falling in love with Jesus was the best thing I've ever, ever done. Falling in love with Jesus, falling in love with Jesus, falling in love with Jesus was the best thing I've ever, ever done. In his arms, I feel protected. In his arms, never disconnected. In his arms, I feel protected. There's no place I'd rather, rather be. In his arms I feel protected In his arms never disconnected Oh, in his arms I feel protected There's no place I'd rather, rather be Falling in love with Jesus, falling in love with Jesus, falling in love with Jesus was the best thing I've ever, ever done. In his arms I feel protected In his arms never disconnected In his arms I feel protected There's no place I'd rather, rather be
fallen in love with Jesus. Oh, there's a lot of things that you can fall in love with, but if you don't fall in love with him, you've missed it. You've missed it all. Amen. What a relationship. We're going to ask um, the group from um, Ohio, the sisters, if they would uh, make their way up here for their special. And uh, let's, let's sing that chorus. Um, can't you see why I'm happy in the key of C if they want to make their way up here? Oh, can't you see why I'm so happy? For I've accepted the word of the Lord, the revealed word that was spoken. Emmanuel, he's with us, he's in us. Let's sing that chorus, Emmanuel, in the key of C. And we're going to ask uh, Sister Trudy, Sister Christine, Monica's class, and Boyd's class to make their way up here as we sing this. Emmanuel, his name is called. Yeah. 
when I'm in need, I call on the Lord, and He hears me, yes, He helps me, He is faithful and true, won't forget His own, my companion, my best friend, the only true. Stand for you. Stand for you. The victory will come. Not how you think it should, but my great Jehovah just loves a paradox. Stay in your position. He wants a miraculous come into action. Our God is tremendous. His strength never failed. It. He goes through the fire. love story how tremendous in it you'll miss it all if you don't fall in love with Jesus amen praise the Lord you may be seated we're going to sing a couple of worship songs before our brother comes out what a tremendous God we serve amen 
Hallelujah. The brothers could uh, pull the song up, uh, Worthy is the Lamb. In the back, we will just uh, sing a couple of verses with this. Amen. Are you thankful for the Lamb of God? I tell you, what a great, tremendous story for him to come down, dwell in not only your heart, but you're part of his bride this morning. Amen. Thank you for the cross, Lord, and thank you for the price you paid, bearing all my sin and shame, in love you came and gave amazing How great 
is our God. Sing with me how great is our God. And all will see how great, how great. Oh, he's great this morning. Yes, Father, Spirit, and Son, the Lion and the Lamb, the Lion and the Lamb. Oh, how great is our God. Sing with me, how great is our God. And all will see how great, how great is our God. Bible says every knee shall bow Amen. and every tongue shall confess Amen. whether you want to or not. Amen. We do it willingly. The world's going to have to do it one day. I'm on. Libby, I'm on.
Hello. Ta da. Okay. Hi. How's that? And I just took a text from Brother Richard. Good to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. Man. Kendrick, again. Man. Good job. You'll learn how to get here one of these days. Just saying. Good to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. Good to have each and every one of you here. Man, house full. We got probably 10 or 15 downstairs. Can't even, can't even get up here. So uh, good, to, good to be here. Good to see each and every one of you. If you would have your seats, I'm going to have Brother Isaac to come up and, uh, and greet the people and, uh, and tell us about his family a little bit and tell us how in the world he got here. And, and uh, his dad's watching in, I'm sure. So uh, just come on up, brother, and you just give us a word. Tell us, uh, tell us what in the world you're doing here. God bless you, buddy. Brother Isaac, uh, Negron. Is that good enough? That's good enough. Okay, all right. Okay. Don't be shy now. Don't uh, be shy. The speaker Don't be shy. Here. Don't be shy. Uh, greetings from uh, Lorraine, Ohio. On behalf of my family, my name's Isaac Negron. Um, in 2015, um, excuse me, I'm a little nervous, but uh, I'm not really a speaker. But uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> In 2015, um, the Lord let my dad online. Um, my dad's not really a tech-savvy person, but uh, he went online for some reason. He got an ex old Xbox and uh, got on YouTube and started going online. And um, the Lord led him to Brother Samuel Dale. Um, and uh, I'm a little emotional because uh, he was searching for the truth. And... Um, um, I had just came back. I was, we were raised in the message. Me and my brother, my brother sent back here, Elisha, but uh, we were out for a while. And, um, and um, so when we were coming in, my dad found Brother Samuel Dale online. And, uh, and so um, it, it's kind of a complicated thing. But anyway, without saying too much, um, we're here today. Uh, my dad was talking to us and, and just sharing things with us that we hadn't seen before. And, um, you know, when you hear something, when you're in the message and you hear certain things and then my father was sharing with us certain things, it, it kind of like it throw it throws you for a loop because you were raised a certain way and you believe a certain way. But uh, it was like oh, it was just like an onion peel. Brother, we've heard it before. You're peeling back that onion, onion peel. But uh, it started opening things for us. And um, so uh, my dad knows everybody, pretty much everybody here behind the the pulpit. He knows this brother here. Uh, you mechanic? Yeah, you're a mechanic. And um, the the other brother on this side, um, uh, H HVAC guy. Yeah. So yeah, my dad my dad knows pretty much every. He, he wish I wish he could be here. He couldn't make it. But um, so anyway, I just want to share that. Uh, we, we really appreciate everybody here. You guys got something special here. And um, uh, right now. <laughs> So right now we're we're just streaming online with everybody, and um, so we're all part of a part of you guys, and uh, we appreciate you guys and love you guys very much. I appreciate uh, Brother Luis, your ministry, Brother Zach, your testimony, um, Brother Bob, appreciate you. So love you guys. Thank you. Thanks for having us. And go Bulldogs. <laughs> His dad's the one that's got the um, ringtone on his phone that says, wake up! <laughs> and his name is Brother Enrique. Right? Is that right? Huh? Is that right? Is that good enough? Yes, close enough. Close enough? Okay. All right. Well, Brother Elisha, stand up. He didn't introduce y'all. He, Huh? Oh, back on? Okay. That's, that's, one, that's one of the brothers. That's the one young brother. The sister couldn't make it. Right? Okay, but the sister beside of him is Sister Melissa Delgado. She's a nurse, and I'll quickly tell a little testimony. She was, and if I'm wrong, I fill in the blank, but she was uh, wanting to come down with them. Uh, she's not a family member, I don't think, but she wanted to come down with them to be in the service and, and to travel with them, but they couldn't either find a place for her to go or, or a place in the car or something happened. Well, she's a nurse, and... Uh, what was it? A little while, just a little while ago, her boss comes to her and says, "I want you to go to a conference." 
And so Sister Melissa says, well, just get me a motel room. She thought it was right there in the town they're in. And she says, no, we're going to fly you to Atlanta. On this very weekend. So she got flown down here for free and and had a conference, and then now she's able to come to the service. So so it's a good testimony there, and thank you for being a nurse. We appreciate that. Sister Ariana Morales is beside, right? Am I good with that? Okay, all right, well, okay. So I don't want her to stand up. She may pass out. (laughs) But good to have her. She's part of the family. Uh, Sister Tabitha, I can't believe you didn't introduce your wife. Sister Tabitha, she's, um, she thinks I'm kind of rough until she finally met me. So uh, she wanted to ask June how I put up, she put up with me, but I, people have been asking that forever. So Sister Tabitha, Sister Sela, where's she at? Sela? Sela? Good to have Sister Sela with her. And Brother Micah, where's he at? Oh, there he is. Okay, Brother Micah. All right, I think that's got everybody. And then you met Brother Isaac, and then the dad's watching online, I'm sure, because we talked to him last night. And I really love that man, but I love him more now because he's got a bulldog. <laughs> but it's not a Georgia bulldog, it's an Ohio bulldog, so we're going to have to change that. Amen? But good to have each and every one of you here, if you would stand to your feet now. I've got a few announcements to make, but I'll make you stand before you fall asleep. But we're going to eat downstairs. we got to spread. Please stay and eat and fellowship. Uh, we'll try not to be too long. We, I told Brother Joe, let's take our time. But I know none of you's going to leave because you you leave when the service is long, but not when you got food at the end of it. So um, good to have them though from Ohio. It's it's a it's a refreshing pleasure. I told y'all many times before. Sometimes you know, Brother Keith Reed told us many many years ago. He said, Brother Wade, and Brother Sam. He said, you're sometimes not preaching to the people in this building. But Praise God that we've got a, a group of people. I mean, that used to be our cry room back there where they're at. You know, that was the nursery. We didn't have a thing called the Internet. We didn't have a thing called uh, the cameras and the online streaming. And then God sent us a group of uh, Holy Ghost-filled people. Yes. To get the word out to our brothers in different places in the world and the country. So it's all the glory goes to God. But you don't know, you know, many times we don't know who we're touching even out in the regular world. But one day God will tell you that that person made it because of you. That testimony you had, that life you lived, that one moment that you shook their hand and said, God bless you, we're praying for you. You'll know that when we get on the other side and we'll be able to really rejoice and then not think we're all so insignificant because all of us, if you got the Holy Ghost today, you're not insignificant. You're God Almighty in human flesh. Amen. And also we have a visitor, Brother Dakota, in the back. Um, I'm not going to tell you why he's here, but uh, good to have him with us. Olivia's back there somewhere, so good to have him with us. Make yourself at home. As Dad always says, you're, you're a visitor one time when you come back. You're not a visitor anymore. So, uh, And also, I want you to remember, uh, I gained a, a daughter-in-law Friday. You know, Josh got married. Well, she fell at the wedding and, and bummed her knee up real bad and had to take her to the emergency room, and she's at home now with her leg up. So let's just pray for her that everything will be okay. So gained a grandson, Harrison, too. So thank God for that. That's okay. All right, I want to thank Brother Boyd and Brother Louise for putting these up, They, uh, the uh, group from Ohio. And then yesterday we had a little get together at Brother Boyd's and thank you all for coming and, and participating and uh, today let's remember the sisters and everybody that brought food downstairs, they're all down there getting everything ready to go and thank you for bringing food squash casserole better be down there that's what brought them from Ohio Brother Aaron will be preaching for us Wednesday night, he has gone on a little vacation uh, time up in the mountains, so he's not going to be here today, but he will be preaching Wednesday night. Remember, Brother Dutch Scott will be preaching this coming Sunday. I'll be in Illinois from the 18th to the 23rd, but Brother Dutch will be here next Sunday to preach both services, just like normal, regular service. On November the 23rd will be Tuesday. That will be when we have our service. 
Brother Bob will be preaching. We will not have a Wednesday night service. That is the Wednesday before Thanksgiving Day. And Brother Luis will be leaving on what, the 29th or 30th? 30th. 30th, going to Central America, and we took up an offering. If you have anything else, you just hand it to him um, and uh, to help him out. He's going to be gone for six or seven weeks. All right, so remember that. Also, one more thing. Just remember, December the 19th will be our Christmas dinner, church Christmas dinner. It will be at Hidden Acres where we had the one last year and where we had the Valentine's banquet down in Gillsville at the uh, venue. And that will be a catered meal, so you won't have to fix anything. And then also December the 31st, Brother Chris Long will be here for our watch night service. So let's just keep those things in your prayer. And uh, we, it's an exciting time. It's a wonderful time, but it's also a stressful time. So let's just pray that God will take the stress away. Yeah. Amen. Stressful time for everybody trying to get the families together and trying to get here and there. But let's just pray that everything will work out really, really well this holiday season. And let's not forget... Let's not forget every day the reason why we're even here. doesn't matter if it's November, December, Thanksgiving Day, or, or anything. You ought to be thinking. I, I tell you, it's so wonderful. You look at Brother Branham. He preached one of the most powerful sermons on 11-25-1965. Thanksgiving Day, he preached the Invisible Union. What a Thanksgiving message that he told those people that it was an invisible union with the bride in Christ. What a greater time and a greater thing to be thankful for. So let's bow our heads. We're going to be speaking again here on this, who is this son of man. That would be part nine, not part eight, part nine. All right. <clears throat> let's bow our heads. Remember everybody in prayer and all the traveling that we're, everybody's going to do. Let's just remember we have traveling mercies. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for the day you give us. And this time that you've given us, Lord. We know that time's going to run out soon. And Lord, we're going to slip right into eternity. But we're going to remember these days, Lord, I believe. The wonderful times we had in the atmosphere that we came under, Lord, of the anointing of the Holy Spirit. And the kindred spirit that each one of us brought today, Lord, we'll remember these times and we'll talk about, oh, how wonderful, like the ones that, from Emmaus. But the only good thing about now, the ones from Emmaus were talking to you, Lord, walking down a road. But now, Lord, you're here inside of each one of us, talking to us all the time, all the way through our walk of life. Lord, I thank you for that. And I pray that you would be with each one that's here, Lord, the ones that are not here. Be with the ones that have to travel this holiday season. Be with the ones from Ohio, Lord, as they continue on wherever they are going. Pray that you'll give them traveling mercies. Lord, just be with us, Lord, for just a moment. You be the active participant in this service. You take over and you lead and guide us by your Holy Spirit, Lord. You do the revealing and you do the speaking. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. <clears throat> Who is this son of man? John 1.1. 1, 1. We're going to get to something a little bit in the book of Luke and, and uh, something I want to really, really touch on. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and life was the light of men. And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. There had to be a messenger. Bring a message. Or we wouldn't have understood who this person was. Amen? There had to be somebody in the end time. Bring a message to help us understand Amen. this one that came. Yeah. Amen. That Christ is here. The same came for a witness to bear witness of the light, that all men through him might believe. He was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. Amen. He wasn't the light, but he bore witness of the light, that all men through him might believe. He was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. That was the true light, which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. He was in the world. The world was made by him, and the world knew him not made the world and made the people standing in the world, and they didn't know who he was. He came unto his own. He actually, then he said, I am he. And they didn't believe that either. They're not going to believe you either. Amen. But as many as received him, ask me and you. But as many as received him, amen, because we had to receive him, wasn't born special, Born in sin, shaping in iniquity, dying. Yes. We received him. Yes. To them gave he power 
to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name, which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. So it has nothing to do with your natural birth. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory as the glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. You may be seated. Now I want you to look that word full, because remember, he was the fullness of the Godhead bodily. There was no part of him that was not God. Show me one. There wasn't a part of him. Even his flesh that was rotting or deteriorating or dying, that body came from God. That body was God. Amen? But it was born in a way that you and I can see that he was born a man, a human, mortal, so he could taste death for me and you. He couldn't taste death as the Son of God. He couldn't taste death as the great Elohim or, or all the great titles that, <clears throat> Excuse me. they gave him in the Old Testament. He had to come as man, yes. a baby. Amen. See, even Adam, as great as Adam was, Adam was called the Son of God. That's fine because he had the, he had the Holy Ghost in his soul. Amen? Amen. But his body's what died. Right. Amen? His spirit realm is where he fell. He didn't, he didn't fall in his soul. That's right. He fell in his spirit realm. Because, listen, if you're born again, you can't fall in your soul. That's right. Impossible Amen. for God to fall that's right. because that's who it is. Right. Right. It's that by the transforming power of God, God's in there now. Right. Uh, that's what I hope we understand is we, we've already got what people are looking for. Hello, somebody. We've already got what people are looking for. And we're not using it. We've got it so wrapped up inside of our memory, reason, conscious, affection, imagination, and our flesh, and all these different things. We gotta let it go. We gotta we gotta but we gotta start somewhere. You can't just say, Well, I got it all when I believe. You got everything you needed to believe more. But you didn't get all. You got everything you needed to believe more. Yes, yes. Amen. I was listening to a denominational preacher. <gasps> and actually got some out of his sermon. But he was talking on the statue of a perfect man. And he made this statement and I thought, man, how profound. He said, he's talking about fruits of the spirit. Everybody talks about fruits of the spirit, right? Where does that fruit come from? He said, the fruit is in the root. Think about it. It didn't just pop up on the end of a, the bud didn't just pop up on the end of the, of the uh, stick that goes out there, you know, because God says, I'm the vine. Where's the vine? The vine's what's plugged into the ground. I am the vine. You are the branches. So we started at the bottom of the statue of a perfect man, the root. And whatever that root is, that's what we're going to be. So that fruit comes from the power of the root. All that energy comes from the root. Yes. You say, no, it comes from photosynthesis. It comes from the leaf. Well, that leaf has to talk to the root. Yes. And the root has to say, I'm going to release the energy to go up to that plant. So that's a good thing. Hey, you, sometimes you might all listen to a denominational preacher. You might get something. But the fruit's in the roots. That's the same way. The fruit. Where do these fruits of the Spirit come from? The root cause is because this son of man came on earth and showed us how to live them. Amen? Amen. Amen. Unless he die, see, he said, unless a grain of wheat die and go into the ground. Uh Well, now, what's the first thing that starts growing? What attaches that seed to the ground? A root. The root comes out, and that's where the power comes from. It's when that root starts absorbing the 16 elements, the dirt, and then it what? Produces itself. Amen? So I thought that was pretty good. But, that, but God had to provide a body. Let's go to Hebrews 10, verse 1. We've read this before. Let's read this again. But for the law having a shadow of good things to come and not the very image of the thing can never, with those sacrifices which they offered year by year, continually make the comer thereunto perfect. In other words, there was no root. Jesus Christ was the root. Your Holy Ghost, that's where everything comes from. That wasn't in the Old Testament. There was no Holy Ghost in the Old Testament. 
There was an anointing. They got an anointing, and that's why that they couldn't fulfill the fruits of the Spirit. That's why they couldn't fulfill all the Word of God like you and I can. Yes. You know, it's great for the, to see the, the two guys that, uh, that walked in the road to, on the road to Emmaus, and Jesus just absolutely told them, he, he was telling them, he went through all the Scriptures, and, but he wasn't in them. He was a man talking to him, and he said, oh, did our hearts burn within us? Well, then that man is in your heart today. Right. It ought to burn more than that. Right. It ought to burn your whole being. Yes. Right. If it burned in their hearts that a person was telling them what the Old Testament was and who he was, that one person is now inside of you. Yes, That's why I said at the first of the year, you need to let out what you got inside. I don't care whether it's good or bad. Amen. If I got something bad in me, I want it out. Amen. Let it out. But I do want what's good inside of me to be let out also so the world can see who we are. Amen? We can say message believers all we want to. We have a Holy Ghost on our spirit every day of our life and die and go to hell. You can say Brother Brown said a million times because you know what? That's what's going to happen when they come up to him in the end time and they say, have I not preached the message of the hour? Have I not cast out devils in your name? He said, depart from me. I never knew you. In other words, you never, you never got me inside your soul. You thought you did. You got a good anointing that, that some preacher told you you were okay. We're not okay. We're getting okay. But we got the one that's okay inside of us. If we got that residing inside of us, then we can make it. But not in the Old Testament. It couldn't make them perfect. There was nothing, there was nothing to, there was no power to make man stop doing what they were doing. Right, right. All right? <clears throat> For then would they not have ceased to have been offered. In other words, one sacrifice and done. Because that the worshiper once purged should have had no more conscious of sins. Right. Now, do we have conscious of sin? You say yes, but you should say no, because your soul can't sin. If you're born again, there's no conscience of sin. And if you if you sin, Brother Brown said you sin a sin, you're going to read the tub full. Where are you sinning from? Your memory, reason, conscience, affection, imagination. Your human nature is where you're doing that from. But listen, and that guy's inside of you going, don't do that, don't do that. Hello, <laughs> don't do that, don't do that. And if you do do it, though, who's the one that, get, that condemns you? That one that's inside. He's the, he's the one that condemns you, and then you're different from the world because we used to do the things we used to do, and we, it didn't bother us. There was nothing inside except him. And he said, that's okay. Right? But now that you got the Holy Ghost inside of you, what's he saying? You need to repent. You need to repent. The devil never, while I was out in the world for 20 years, the devil never come to me and said, you need to repent. Did he? Did your devil do the same thing? Maybe your devil's different than mine. Maybe, maybe you got a different, they got one in different Ohio? No? Same devil? Okay. All right. I just wanted to make sure it wasn't just a Georgia thing because remember the devil went down to Georgia. And um, <clears throat> where'd that come from? What? That's in the spiral book, some other spiral book. It ain't this one. But look, look, it's not the Bible telling us, though, that if the worshiper once purged should have had no more conscious of sins. Paul's telling us they did have a conscious of sin because there was nothing to perfect them. But now that perfection has, has the Son of Man come, died, left us the statue of a perfect man, left us the fruits of the Spirit, left us a way to walk like he walked. Amen. Had a guy um, Friday at the wedding, they were, um, they were all, they're, they're, both of them are Greeks because Leah's a Greek. And most of them are Greek Orthodox. And I wanted to know the difference between Greek Orthodox and Roman Catholic Church. So they're close, but they're, they're totally separate. But he kept reverting back to that same thing. He said, oh, so we can't help it because I told him. He said, well, what do y'all believe? I said, well, I said, we teach what's in the Bible. You know, folks, and this is way off my subject, but we're going to stay on this for a minute. You know, I was thinking the other day, you're, we're the only people that can take the Bible. Word of God. 
Now, everybody's preaching in it today. But we can take this word of God and hand it to somebody and say, show me where I'm not doing what's in the Bible. Show me. We believe in one God. We don't believe in eternal hell. It's not even in the Bible. So what am I telling? What I told that guy, I said, you build a lot of your religion on tradition. And he agreed. Because that's what the Roman Catholic Church, they, they, a lot of theirs is tradition. You can't get it out of the Bible. That, that Mary was the mother of God and, and the, even that she was, she, you know, the Roman Catholics teach that she was immaculately conceived also. In other words, she was conceived from a virgin, which made her a virgin, and then God, and then I'm like, no. I ain't buying that. I said, where'd that come out of the Bible? Uh, my Bible says Mary went to the upper room. Why'd she go to the upper room if she was God? She needed God. She bore the seed, but she wasn't the seed. Amen? Amen? So I asked him, and he kept saying, well, well, we're not perfect. Well, we're not perfect. I said, that's not what this Bible tells me. Your traditions tell you you can't be perfect. Your tradition. Now, what didn't, you know, I never said this, but I thought, man, didn't Jesus stand one day and tell the very religious people of the world that he came to? He said, your traditions is what's killing you. You've made them of none effect by your traditions. He was telling them, he said, you've took the Old Testament and made it of none effect because of your tradition. So he said, so you believe what's in the Bible? I said, look, I said, whatever we preach... We have it in the Bible. It's not in a catechism. It's not in a, and he was talking about how they recite the Apostles' Creed and all that. I said, that's not even in the Bible. I, I said, Let's, if we stay with the Bible, we got to be somewhere close to being perfect. All right. You can stay out there with your tradition, which tells you you can't be perfect. But right here, he said, because that the worshiper once purged. Now, when you receive the new birth, does that mean you have been once purged? You don't get you don't get the baptism of the Holy Ghost in your soul as the new birth, and then you got to have it again, and you lose it tomorrow. No, one and done. Amen. Because you're sealed. You're sealed. The book is sealed. Everything's sealed inside of you. But if the worshiper once purged, should have no more conscience of sins. But in those sacrifices, there is a remembrance again made of sins every year. So because you got to take the lamb, because you got to meet the high priest, because you got to put the thing on there and they got to kill it and the blood goes everywhere and you say, okay, I'm fine. But when the person turns and walks back out, he's going to send the same sin again. Now, folks, if we keep sending the same sin again, you need the new birth. You don't just need to go up the statue of perfect man. You need, to get, you need to get some power in your root. You need to get the root inside of you. That's the seed I like. Plant that seed and give it some root. Amen? But what is the seed? The Word of God. Really simple. Really simple. But in those sacrifices, there's remembrance again made of sins every year. For it is not possible that the blood of bulls and of goats should take away sins. It's not possible. There's no way. It's a substitute. It helped until Christ got here. It helped until the Son of Man walked on earth. Amen? Amen. But I'm telling you, you can't get your sins forgiven without Jesus Christ. Never. There's nobody powerful enough to do that. You know, I'm going to read you next, a couple of Sundays from now. Jesus kept telling them, he said, I want you to know. I want you to know several times in the, in the Gospels that the Son of Man is here and can forgive sins. Amen. And that's why they hated him. Because here's these priests, high priests, they're under bulls and goats, and they keep doing the same thing everybody else does. And this man walks up, and he says, who can convince me of sin? Convince me. Who can convince me of sin? I don't do the things you do. I don't go by tradition. I live by the word of God. 
And then the people are like, well, you know, you're, you're a man making yourself God. No, it was God made himself a man. Now, what's the difference in you? I know there's a difference in you and, and God. We were born in sin. We have a sinful nature, which is our memory, reason, conscience, effects, and imagination. Now, Jesus did not because he knew no sin. He didn't have a carnal mind. He couldn't look back and say, I know what my mom and daddy did to get me here. See, that makes the ball rolling right there because you do. You do. We do the same thing. Well, I do this because my daddy. Don't you blame your daddy. Brother Elisha, no brother Isaac. Bless you, brother. You didn't make these two the way they are. They did it theirself. He's going to go, Phew, boy. But it's not possible that the blood of bulls and goats take away sin. Wherefore, when he cometh into the world, listen, he didn't build a soul. He didn't build a soul. He always was a soul. Amen. The theophany of God. But he had to build a body. He had to build a 16 element body so he could be our brother. So we could look at him and he could look at us. And he said, unless you believe that I am he, you'll die in your sins. Well, listen, you know what? They didn't believe who he was. So they died in their sins. Because that's what he told them. He said, don't you? He said, I, I've come to this earth to forgive your sins. Yes. Yes. And you're turning me down. In other words, he knew they was going to kill him. Somewhere eventually down the road, they were going to kill him. Yes. He was going to have to die for them. But a body has thou prepared me. A body, a flesh body. That's what connects the son of man with this whole thing, the whole human race, is that he came in human flesh yes. and he was born, virgin born though, but he was born, but watch what he did. Let's read this real quick, number one, in the masterpiece. Then come finally the great head, the head of all of it. The rest of the body just spoke of it. The foundation was laid by the patriarch, but the body was built by the word, which was the prophets. In other words, he stepped out on their prophecy, didn't miss it by one scripture, actually didn't miss it by one word. You know, if he would have come one word off, he couldn't have been our Savior. He didn't miss it by one word. Now, you say, we don't say, but you say, well, we can't be perfected. Why can't we be perfected? When you've got the one that is perfect inside of you. We're just not letting that thing out and using it. That's the whole problem. Why? Because our carnal mind says we can't, or I did, or I must have. That's tradition. That's not what the Bible says. That's a tradition somebody has taught you. And it's wrong. It's wrong. Anything outside the word of God's wrong. And sure, the Bible does say you were born in sin, shaped in iniquity, but I can read you thousands of others that says you're perfect. Sinless. Brother Branham in Invisible Union, he said, a sinless bride is going to be presented to God. Not over yonder. Right here. Right here. Because look, the union's not over yonder. If you don't get married here, you're not going to get married over there. The union happens on earth while you're in human flesh. And I know we beat the human flesh a lot. We do. But, and and it, is, it, is, it is our problem. It's the, the spirit and the, and the flesh part. But... God knew what it would take to get us back. And he used human flesh. Why didn't he just send an angel? Why didn't he just say, all right, Brother Darty, you're going to be an angel and you're not going to have no sin. Well, guess what? I believe God created those angels and I believe some of them sinned. Did they not? They believe the devil's lie, and now they're his subjects. So that ain't going to protect you even if you come here an angel. You still got a choice to make. Amen. Satan made a choice. You know what? God made a choice too. 
God could have stood up in the, in the heavens with his arms folded and said, I don't need any of you to exist. And he would be telling the truth. He doesn't even need air. He just doesn't need us. But he wants us. Because we came from here. Everything came from the what? The root. Amen? I am the vine. You are the branches. But the body was built by the word which was the prophets. And here comes the head of it all. Jesus came on the scene. When this headpiece was put on it, we find in him the entire handiwork of God. We find in him the perfect reflection of the word, for he was the word, the fullness of the word. Now look, now again, God has the perfect masterpiece again. Who's he talking about in the masterpiece? He's not talking about only Jesus Christ. He's talking about his bride, the body that's been prepared for Jesus which is not the physical body. It's me and you. You know why? Because he chose it. That's his choice to be a savior, redeemer, healer. That's his choice. He made a choice. Isaiah 7 verse 13 says, Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son. Shall call his name Emmanuel. That's how he got here. Isaiah 9 6, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. He tells the government shall be on his shoulder and all these different things. All these great, like the, like the uh, song was talking about crowns. I was thinking about that when we were singing that song. How great is our God? We're really not going to know until we get there. The fullness. We're just going to get enough to get us out of here. And then we've got an eternity to learn about this God that we're talking a little bit about today and a little bit about tomorrow and a little bit about when you talk to him. You're going to get just enough to know the, the, the magnitude of what he's going to do for us. The Bible says, eye has not seen, ear has not heard, or entered in the heart of man. We can't, we can't comprehend because you know what? We're all thinking now, well, I've got to go to work tomorrow. Well, I've got to do this tomorrow. I've got to pay bills tomorrow. I've got to do this. But what about a day when that's not going to happen anymore? But you know what? If you don't get prepared now, you're not going to meet that. You're going to meet torment that you're not going to be ever able to get relief from that. Think about it, young people. I'm not trying to scare you, but I'm telling you, if you don't know God, it's horrible. Amen. Horrible. Yes, but I know, listen, when I was out, Louis, when we was out in the world, we didn't think about God every day. No. So we had to come to a time. I'm telling you, we all had to come to a time to where God said, okay, that's enough. You got to make a choice today. Amen. But listen, don't miss that choice. Don't miss that day. Don't miss that visitation Amen. of God coming to you and say, hey, let me in. Yes. Amen? Because I want to be in your flesh. Yes, I came in flesh so I could be in your flesh. Right. The only person that can do that. Amen. Isaiah 53 said he was taken from prison and from judgment. And who shall declare his generation? As we were talking about before, he could have been a, he could have, he was a human mortal man. He could have had, a, he could have had a progeny. He could have had a line of children. But he knew that's what was killing. He knew they, were, they would die. They would die. Because everybody is born of man is full of days or dead. In other words, they're dead. But he told Nicodemus, he said, now you've got to be born from above. He said, now if we can get you born from above, he said, I can give you eternal life. And said, we can just continue on and on. That's what he's saying here. He was cut off of the land of the living for the transgression of my people was he stricken. And he made his grave with the wicked and with the rich in his death because he had done no violence. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He has put him to grief. Look, when thou shalt make his soul, his soul, an offering for sin. Like I said before, and don't get me wrong, but you have to pull Jesus apart and see what the body did for us, the spirit did for us, and the soul did for us. Because the soul, the, the body of Listen, the body of Jesus can't come back inside of you. It was a propitiation, though, according to the Old Testament, it was the sacrifice, the flesh sacrifice. Everybody with me? It was the flesh sacrifice. Behold, the Lamb of God. What's a lamb? A lamb is flesh. Flesh had to be given. Every sacrifice, except for the meat offering and certain ones, was flesh. Amen? Because they fell in flesh in the Garden of Eden. So now we got to come back in flesh and clean this thing up, Jesus Christ, and then he's going to make his soul an offering for sin. It was his soul, his person. 
It's what is before the throne. Not the body. His soul. He gave his soul a ransom. So he what? For sin, he shall see his seed. In other words, he shall see his progeny. He shall see his seed. He shall prolong his days, and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. He shall see the what? The travail of his soul again. He don't talk about his body. The travail of his soul. Listen, he poured out his soul unto death is what we're talking about right here. Therefore will I divide him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he hath poured out his soul unto death. You know, you look and you see, Brother Brown said one time, he said, God died. And then he said, God can't die. Amen. What are you going to do with that? You're going to read in between the lines. Amen. God played the part of death. Because you can't kill God. But Jesus died. You say, well, that's the same person. Yes, but watch the manifestation. When Jesus died on the cross, that soul came out of Jesus, which was God. Amen. Amen. And it went and preached to the souls in prison. We read that last week. Amen? Right. Amen. But the body was what was put in the grave, and it was D-E-A-D. It was dead. Amen. And if it hadn't have been for David saying he'll not leave his soul in hell or suffer his Holy One see corruption, that body would have corrupted just like Lazarus did. Because right. yeah. right. it was a human body. But that soul, he made an offering with his soul, and when that soul came back into that body, it quickened his mortal body. Does that sound like a scripture that we've been talking about? Amen. It quickened his mortal body, and Romans 8 says he's going to quicken your body the same way he quickened Jesus' body. Amen. Why? Because it's the same spirit. Amen. Not a second person. Amen. <laughs> Not two Holy Ghost. Oh, no. And the brother was telling me there about the, uh, the Catholic Church is some, they split the Holy Ghost. And it's just, I said, look, it's real complicated. These traditions are complicated. I, I just read the Bible where he said, I'll give you the Holy Ghost. Well, I just believe that. I don't, it ain't got to be split up into whatever and make me do this and it don't make me do that. Because, you know, you always go back to what he said. Ain't nobody perfect. Well, I said, that's not what my Bible says. He said, oh, I see you do. Please. Please. Come on. If we don't start seeing that we are the sinless bride of Jesus Christ, we'll just continue to stay here. Start believing. Don't worry about what you see. Start believing. Because it's already been said. Amen? Not got to change the Bible. We just got to start looking at it and saying, well, that's me. Devil, I like what Brother Schrader always said. We had an older brother who used to come to church here a long, long time ago. And he said, devil, if you're going to look through my eyes and talk to me in my brain, he said, we're going to read the Bible. Right. We're going to read the Bible. <laughs> devil, if you're going to play up here, we're going to start reading the Bible. Right. And he said, that old devil will just leave him. Well, see, the devil can't stand the word of God. Amen. That's what we'll read here in just a few minutes. When Jesus went and was tempted, the greatest temptation of 40 days and 40 nights, Jesus by himself. The devil quoted him scripture. He didn't give him a tradition. He quoted him the scripture. But he misquoted. He actually misrepresented the scripture. Because he had no revelation. All right, so let's continue on here just for a few minutes. Everybody all right? Amen. It's not even 12 o'clock yet. Luke 1 verse 30. Behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb and bring forth a son and shall call his name Jesus and he shall be great and Call the son of the highest, and the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David, and he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there shall be no end. <clears throat> and then Matthew 2, verse 11, we know that the, the wise men brought him three gifts, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And why am I bringing this out? Because look, deity, they got a revelation. There was something different about that child. Right? Right? I mean, he was just a two-year-old kid sitting in the lap of the child. I like what Brother Marcus, he was almost preaching what, what we had preached last Sunday. 
you know, about the two-year-old, the, the baby being two years. The baby wasn't a baby. It wasn't a baby like this. It was sitting in his mother's lap, so it was a couple of years old. But they brought gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Now, it was a revelation they had. Deity, Brother Brown talks about it here, and God's gifts always find their place. So now, gold in the Bible, paragraph 52, but fitting it, fitting it fits to Christ because gold speaks of deity. The gold is deity. We'll get to it in just a moment. Frankincense speaks of service and myrrh's death. So God, deity, and service to die, and that's what he was. The very thing that they brought identified what they thought he was. Now, what's the same thing with me and you in our life? Amen. I was thinking about this the other day. Because we've got to start seeing that we, we take Jesus over here and we say, well, he was, and we know there's, we weren't virgin born, okay? But he learned by the things he suffered. He was made perfect. All these things we read about this God. Everybody with me? Amen. Everything we read about this God. And we say that's just, I'm, it's unreachable. No, it's a total example of what you got to go through. Because are you not deity if you're born again? Dedicated unto death, unto death. Now listen, there's some going to die. But there's deity dedicated unto death. They're not going to get all the way to it. Somebody's going to make a body change. Somebody's going to see that they're God Almighty in human flesh, call the bride, not a second person, and they're going to stand up and say, death... You have no part with me because the one inside of me is greater than the death that you are bringing to me. Amen. Isn't that just real simple? Brother Brown said he'll, death will walk, crawl up your sleeve and you just... Now, how many of us really believe that? Amen. You better start. Amen. You better start. Amen. And it's not just a good thought. Amen. No, that's what I told the, the traditions... To, to, the traditions that they believe in the Catholic Church and all the other Roman Catholic, that's, that's just tradition. That's just good thoughts because it's not God. It's not, it's, you know, when you can't have a trinity and all these different things and, and uh, communion with saints and dead saints and all that stuff, you know, you, you can't do that. And our, I think our sister um, back there was come up in the Catholic Church. Tabitha, you, didn't you come up in the Catholic Church? Yeah. And some, some of the ones here come up in, in a little bit of Catholicism and and it's, uh, it's different. But it's tradition. And it's hard to, you know what? Truthfully, if you were a devout Catholic, it's harder to live a devout Catholic life than it is a Christian life. Because you got all the, every move you make, you got to go to mass, you got to go to this, you got to do that, you got to pray to that saint, you got to pray to that saint if you're going to drive somewhere, you got to pray to that Let's just pray to one God. And he's my daddy. And I feel comfortable talking to him. And I don't have to go find a book to find out where he's at. But that's, but listen, billions of people today believe that. Billions of Catholic people believe that. They're good people, folks, but now they're caught up in a bad situation. Everybody okay? Amen. Just pray for them. Amen. I like what Brother Marcus said. He said, call them brother. Remember on Wednesday, he said, you call them brother. He said, you, he said, don't, don't, he said, they're human beings. And I want to take that point. I want all, we're human beings. I'm not talking about that guy I met the other day, but look what he's caught up in. Now listen, if he receives that, he becomes that. And there's nothing I can do about it. But see, the same way with me and you, if we receive what's being preached to us, and it's the truth. And we become that. What are we? We're the manifestation of what this Bible said. Amen. We're not a tradition. We're not a second person. We don't need another something to come. Man. Think of how privileged we are. Everything we need has already come here. Totally available. You can actually now put 1,100 sermons in, in that bottle cap. If you had the right kind of little thing to put it in, like the chip, right? In that right there. All 1,100 sermons that used to be, I didn't tell the brothers, but this whole back wall right here when we first had the church, this whole wall, there was no door there, whole wall was shelves because this used to be a store building. 
All the shelves had the sermons of the eight inch reels stacked one on top of each other from, from bottom to top. And people could check them out. It was a library. But it covered that whole wall. And I don't think, Dad, that wasn't the whole, that wasn't all 1,100 of them, was it, Mom? No, it was about maybe 800, something like that. We didn't even have the whole volume. And now you got it right here? If you had to, I mean, if you listened to four sermons, you had to get a box <laughs> to put the tapes in. And then the tape player was this big. Because an eight inch reel, that would be 16 inches. And it'd be this big, and it only came up later on that they had batteries where you could carry it somewhere else. You'd have to plug it in. And I've seen Daddy take and get the, 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 um, the belts were rubber, and they'd start wearing out, and they'd start slipping, and the tape would get real loud. And Daddy would, yeah, I see Sister Tabitha, I'm funny here too. Daddy would take a pencil and stick it inside that thing and start turning it to get it caught back up. That's what we did to hear the message, and now we got it on this right here, and we don't listen. We don't think we got everything we need. When we got it right here, we put it in our pocket. We put our little, our little um, iPods on that don't have any connection. You know, they're right here, you know, wireless communication now, and we have problems with that. Come on, people. Let's not just grow up. Let's just get old. Let's just grow in God more. Amen. Not just grow up and say, well, quit doing it. No, let's grow up in God. Let God do the work for us. Amen. Because he did grow up. Listen, let's keep, let's continue on. Um, Okay, let's skip number four. Let's go to number five. Uh, brothers in the back. Jehovah God became man, took on our stock, crossed himself from God and became man. There's your sign. He was God and became man, not rich man, but poor man. This is the super sign. Let's go on down to the red. When that first little toothless mouth opened in that manger on that first crib, first Christmas morning in his little manger crib, the first little yell that went out of his voice, that was God crying. You say, that's impossible. Only God can do it. Only God can do that. So we know that's God. Because <laughs> only God can do that. And then he sent us a prophet to tell us exactly what he was. So let's go to Revelation 3.14. We know he grew up. We, knew, we know he grew in grace and knowledge. And we'll read that in just a minute. <clears throat> you say Jesus did? Yeah, he was a human mortal man. All right, so let's go to Revelation 3.14. And to the angel of the church, a lad of sins write, these things saith the amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. Uh, we were talking about this last Sunday. Let's cover it just a little bit more. <clears throat> Let's read the layout of sin, church age, and then we'll make comments on it. The 14th verse of the... Y'all stuck? Maybe they need to... There we go. Okay. The 14th verse of the third chapter of Revelations. And to the angel of the Lord, angel of Laodicea, write these things which saith the amen, the faithful and true witness... The beginning of the creation of God. How odd would that sound? The beginning of the creation of God. Oh my, we got all, if we had all night on that right now, how the Lord would reveal that to us. Watch. The amen is the last. He appears all the way down through the different things, but here in the last church age. Why didn't he say in the first church age? It was God, the Son of God in the church ages, but he wasn't the fullness. All the word hadn't been opened up yet. We're going to look at that in just a minute. We're going to see something that Jesus did that told us the book was going to close up until he came back. All right? Because it did. Remember? It was closed. The book was only open, Brother Brown said, Revelations 10, 7. Revelations 5, it was closed. Revelations 10, it was open. Something happened in between that. Now, to show that he was the first... Down at the bottom. Also as he was, he's the beginning of the creation of God. Oh, do you catch it? How could God be created if he's a spirit? Well, he couldn't because he's eternal. He never was created. He never will be created because he was God at the beginning. Same way with you. You have to separate. I see what began from your mom and daddy. 
But remember, as Brother Marcus was talking Wednesday night, I've never seen the real you. That theophany, that real you, I've never seen. I see the manifestation of it. But if you're born again, that always was. It never had a beginning. It never will have an end. Amen? But God had to somewhere develop when he was developing his plan and he had to come in human flesh. Everybody with me? He had to come in human flesh. He couldn't just be created human flesh though. Like Melchizedek. Captain of the host. Because that couldn't be your Boaz. Boaz had to be a kinsman. In other words, lineage. Jesus became lineage when he became the beginning of the creation of God. There's when the lineage began, the human lineage began. Everybody all right with that? The spiritual lineage never had a beginning. Never will have an end. And then same thing with you. What do we sing? I'm a new what? Creation. Well, Brother John, you look just the same you did before you got the new birth. Right? But you're a new creation. What? That new creature that always was now resides in you because you let it in. That's your choice. But it didn't change this. Thank God for a prophet on the future home. He said, God's not going to destroy this earth. Listen, talk to anybody out in the world. This world, this world's so sinful, God's going to just destroy it. We're going to go live in heaven. Right? We're all going to heaven. It's the puffy cloud and it's, I don't know what they're talking about. I like living right here. Because I'm part of this. And by the transforming power of God, as he transformed me, he's transformed the earth. Same power. So thank God for a prophet that says, oh, he's going to burn it off. Just like he burnt you off. Because John said, I'm going to baptize you with what? Holy Ghost and fire. It's not just going to take the Holy Ghost. It's going to take the Holy Ghost and fire to burn that old you out. And then put the new creation in. But he had to begin somewhere so he can die for us. Our near kinsman had to take our place. Melchizedek couldn't take our place. The captain of the host couldn't take our place. Jesus was born just like you except for the conception. 16 elements of the earth. He was tied to his mama by umbilical cord. Had to eat when he got here. Had poopy diapers. God, yeah. Yeah. He decided he was going to be human. Because you know what? Then he could walk up and say, hey, I'm your brother. I know what you're going through. Even the all-knowing God, I've always thought about the all-knowing God that knows everything. Every gnat that's on the earth and bat its eye and how much Tyler made this great God. He decided to understand you. All-knowing. Knew what your choice would be before he even got here. Yet he wanted to talk to you. And get down to your level and still be God. To me, that's the beginning of the creation of God. When that develops that we understand that that God is not just a God that stands up in heaven with his arms folded. No. No. You ever get him in your heart, you'll understand what I'm talking about. Because you won't if you don't. He's just a theory or a thought or, or, a, or a, a ghost or a, a something that's not tangible. But you get him inside of you, I'll promise you, you'll understand that when he, he had to begin like you began, but yet he was God. But now look. You, by the new birth, what do you become? By this new creation. You become God in human flesh. Called a bride. So see what he done? He came to earth 
And who was it? Somebody read it today, being a little, made a little lower than the angels. That was Jesus. Because even an angel couldn't, couldn't save you. Uh, as far as I know, an angel can't create. We were talking about it the other day, or yesterday, last night. You know, the, the angel that came to Brother Branham said, I have come from the presence of God, right, to bring you this, right? An angel walks in the room. Brother Branham said, stood there with his arms folded, about six foot tall, dark complected. He <laughs> explains the whole thing. There's no angel I ever seen. All the angels we ever see, he's got the wing thingy and the thing around here, and they're all white. No. No. He sent him so that Brother Bradham could understand who was talking to him. But remember, that angel never gave him a revelation. Never. He never said the angel revealed to me. He said the angel told me to look in this scripture. The angel told me all these scriptures to put together. And then Brother Bradham was the one that had to get the revelation. Same way with me and you. We may not see the guy walk in the room, you know. But trust me, you have an angel sent from God if you're born again. And he's with you all the time. But he's not going to give you, he's not your Holy Ghost. He's a guide. He's not your Holy Ghost, but he's your guide. How many times have you been reading something and you, you, you what we were talking about the other day, you read something and, and you read it a hundred times and all of a sudden... It's like somebody wrote a brand new book. Or they added this chapter in here that you swear you read. Good grief. You swear. Oh, I have a new name now. My name's Charlie Brown. Their dad, because I say good grief all the time. Good grief, Charlie Brown. Get it? Okay. Anyway. So. It's funny how people look at you different ways, you know. So That's all right. That's okay with me. We all have our little quirks. But that, but you can look at that, though. What God did for us. And then he sent us a guide. Sure, he gave us the Holy Ghost inside of us, but then Brother Brown said, oh, you've got an angel. And you're reading the Bible or you're reading something and, and something says, read that book again. Right? Somebody, something says, read that scripture again. Go back over the book of Matthew. Amen. Well, that may be that angel over there trying to flip the, <laughs> flip the pages for you, and you're not wanting to. Right. Amen? But the beginning of the creation of God was Jesus Christ when he was made manifest, when God lived in him. He is God's creation. Oh, my, the first and the last, the amen, the beginning of the creation of God. When God created himself a body. But now remember, he didn't just create himself a body from nothing. Everything God does is as a purpose. Because remember, what was the body built? Built by the word of God. Yes. Built by, even though it came through the womb of a woman, even though it came human flesh and he had to eat and he did all the different things that humans had to do, God built that body. Yes. Now see, that's the difference in me and you. Or me and you and him. Your mom and daddy basically formed your body, right? God formed his body. I'm going to tell you something, though. That body went through stuff that you'll never go through. Just for you. So that you don't have to go through it. So he came down and lived in it. It's the beginning of the creation of God. <clears throat> oh, isn't he wonderful? He created himself a body. Oh, isn't he wonderful. Let's Luke 2, verse 39, continue on. And the child grew and waxed strong in spirit, filled with wisdom, and the grace of God was upon him. Now his parents went to Jerusalem every year of the Feast of Passover. When he was 12 years old, they went to Jerusalem after the custom of the feast. <clears throat> when they had fulfilled the days, as they returned, the child Jesus tarried behind in Jerusalem, and Joseph and his mother... Knew not of it, but they supposed him to be with the rest of the company of the crowd, went a day's journey, and they sought him among their kinfolk and acquaintances. And when they found him not, they turned back into Jerusalem, seeking him. And it came to pass that after three days, always three, after three days they found him where? In the temple. He wasn't building, he didn't find him another 
carpenter shop and start working in it. No, he started doing his father's work. <clears throat> Sitting in the midst of the doctors, both hearing them and asking them questions. And all that heard him were astonished at his understanding and answers. And when they saw him, they were amazed. And his mother said, Son, why hast thou dealt with us? Behold, thy father and I have sought thee sorrowing. We know what Brother Bram said about that. She denied the virgin birth. <clears throat> well, she didn't have the Holy Ghost. She didn't have the Holy Ghost. And he said unto them, How is it that you sought me? I wish not that I must be about my father's business. <clears throat> That's the same way with you and I. We should be about the father's business. And they understood not. What a misunderstood guy. They understood not the sayings which he spake unto them. Now, here's Mary. Like I said last night, here's Mary that knows for a fact she didn't have no relations with a man and this baby comes out. It had to come from God. And she can't understand. Verse 50, they understood not the sayings which he spoke unto them. Uh, to me, it's a little, they just were deceived. And he went down with them and came to Nazareth and was subject unto them. But his mother kept all these sayings in her heart. And look, here we go again. And Jesus increased in wisdom and stature and favor with God and men. Amen? Yes. Hebrews 5, verse 8. A few minutes after 12. We're doing good. Though he were a son. <clears throat> okay, look. Though he were a son. You. You. Though you were a son, a child of God, not a son of Samuel and Peggy Dale. This is, this is heading toward what we're going to talk about adoption. Because remember, adoption is not your new birth. Your new birth is what makes you the son. Puts you in the family. Everybody got that? We've been taught well. We know that. But then, yet learned he obedience by the things which he suffered. And being made perfect. Not in his soul. In his humanity. And being made perfect, he became the author of eternal salvation unto all them that obey him, called of God and high priest after the order. Not being Melchizedek, but after the order of Melchizedek because Jesus truly was a high priest. He, was, he fulfilled every bit of it. All right? <clears throat> now, Matthew 3, verse 1, we talked about John the Baptist. And John the Baptist, we know he said, repent ye for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. <clears throat> and it's kind of interesting. I was thinking about this the other day. Here John is preaching a message that he's never going to attain to. Think about it. Think about it. Because the least in the kingdom is greater than John. John wasn't in the kingdom. But he said, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. The only thing he was then, though, there was his responsibility was to introduce the one that had the kingdom in him. That was his job. You see how a prophet has to stand? You see how even Brother Branham was, he was wanting so much on the seals and the different one. He wanted people to see it. He wanted people to enter into what he was preaching. And then it finally got revealed to him, this ain't the group that's going to get it. Wow. See, most of us would have just, I'd have quit and went up in the mountains and you'd never seen me again. Right? Yeah. But he just kept right on preaching. Amen. Kept right on. He knew there was something coming. He, John knew there was one coming. John knew that one day, because remember, see, he hadn't met Jesus yet. But now he's going to meet him and the first thing John's going to say is, behold the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. Matthew 3, verse 11. I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance, but he that cometh after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire, whose fan is in his hand, and he will thoroughly purge his floor and gather his wheat in the garner, but he will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. Then cometh Jesus from Galilee to Jordan unto John to be baptized. But John forbade him, saying, I have need to be baptized of thee, and comest thou to me? Jesus answered and said unto him, Suffer it to be so now, for thus it becometh us to fulfill all righteousness. In other words, then he baptized him. What did the prophet of God tell us? He had to be washed. The sacrifice had to be washed. And Jesus, when he was baptized, went up straightway out of the water, and lo, the heavens were opened unto him, and he saw the Spirit of God. Who saw? John saw. 
because he was going to be a witness. And he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lighting on him. And lo, a voice from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Now, did I not tell us the other day, that's the same thing, God, when you receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost. <clears throat> when you receive the new birth, sister, Lily, may I? God is pleased to dwell in you now. He's deemed you worthy. He's deemed you worthy. Not her. You. Because God's only going to give the Holy Ghost to those that will keep it, cherish it, and develop it. Right? He's not going to give you the Holy Ghost and then know a year from now, not you, know a year from now you're going to just leave. No, you never got the Holy Ghost to begin with. Because remember, he's not going to give it to you, take it away from you. And he's going to give it to you because he sees that you're worthy. Hallelujah. You might not have been worthy 20 minutes before that. Because remember, the unclean spirit goes out. God's not going to dwell in an unclean vessel. How many of these things that we, and that's what gets me with all these people, the things we came here with this some great something in us. No, I was lost. The things I did in the world, God was not, somehow, his eyes was barred from it or I'd be dead. Yours too. Hello? Yours too. But I'd be completely dead physically if the things I did God could see. But he wasn't looking at that, right? God was looking at promise. He was looking at a promise that one day you're going to be worthy. I know you're going to be worthy because you chose me. And I saw it before the foundation of the world. So by foreknowledge, I gave you something not at your birth, but there was something right here with you the whole time. Oh, and sometimes we didn't listen to that, right? Sometimes we didn't. But he was right here. He's wanting to give you the new birth more than you ever want it. More than you ever want it because he's right here. He's wanting to give it to you so bad. And what, what stops us? I, me... I, me, 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 and his other brother, me. And the other brother, I. Because what's stopping God? If he wants to give it to you more than you want it, who's stopping him? You. But you have to wait to get to a place. Now listen, Jesus <clears throat> had to wait to get to a place. <gasps> yes, he did. If he was, was going to be the priest... To begin his ministry, because I didn't, I don't have it, but it's in Luke where the Bible tells us that Jesus becoming thirty, he was almost thirty years old. You know, priests cannot do anything in a in a temple unless he's thirty years old or becoming thirty years old. Okay, so he couldn't at thirteen years old go and be baptized. He had to wait to twenty nine. Well, why are you saying this? Well, some of you have been waiting around for waiting, quit waiting around. But there's a time that you're going to meet God, and you're you're either going to say, "I want you more than life itself." I'm done. Look, I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired. And He's going to give you the desire of your heart. That's what He did that night. Maybe your desire wasn't that six months ago. I'm just speaking to you and me because you're fresh. That's great. Good testimony. Wonderful. Keep her. <clears throat> oh, did I, I'm sorry. I should have cut my microphone off. Listen, folks. It, <laughs> whatever you do, marriage or whatever you got to do is, is hard enough just as human beings. But get the Holy Ghost. Get the new birth. It sure will help. You fight nicer if there's a, such a thing. Maybe I'll ask Sister Tabitha. I'm not going to talk to you. Right? Maybe fighting nice is okay. But in, I mean, really, that's what Jesus, he came to the River Jordan. And remember what I read you the other day. Even the scripture says, now, John, 
I think I got it there. We'll read it again. John, it's not just the one you see the Spirit drop on and then leave. Because remember, he doesn't give you the new birth and then leave, but now he will give you an anointing. You can get that good sanctified feeling and all that unclean stuff's gone out of you and you think, well, I got it now. You better get something because the devil's coming right back and the Bible says he's coming back to his house. He's coming back to his house and he's going to enter back in because you didn't get something sealed. And he's going to make you just so religious. You're going to love the Lord. You're going to love Brother Branham. You're going to love Brother Dale. But you're not going to have agape love for God. You'll have filial love for God. And you know what filial love is? Temporary. It's a temporary love. You said, no, it's just so much. Well, but somebody, somewhere, you, Sister Lily, whoever's in this building, when you're sealed in, God puts a stamp on you. He said, I am pleased at this point in your life to dwell inside of you. You are now my family members. I knew you were going to. You just didn't. I knew you were going to, Lord, a voice from heaven saying, you say, well, I've never heard a voice. Sister Lily, did you, ever, did you hear a voice? No. But you heard God talking to you, though. Come on, folks. If you haven't, the devil's not going to tell you to get the Holy Ghost. That is something he is, he is there's no way. Because it's totally against all of him. He can't say, oh, you need to get the new birth. No, that's God telling you that. No, the devil's going to say, you're fine. Don't worry. Don't worry. You're good. You had that little feeling, didn't you? Yeah, I had a little feeling. Well, you can get a little feeling from other things. But when it turns you to the word of God, because look, what's the first thing Jesus did? Jesus went to the wilderness and he fought the devil. Don't you think that's what me and you are going to do? Listen to this, John 1 verse 29. The next day John seeth Jesus coming to him and said, Behold, the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. This is the he of whom I said, After me cometh a man which is preferred before me, for he was before me. And I knew him not. Hmm. But that he should be made manifest to Israel, therefore am I come baptizing with water. And John bare record say, I saw the Spirit descending from heaven like a dove, and in a boat on him. Look, and I knew him not. Said that twice. And I knew him not. But he that sent me. Now who sent him? The same one that was in Jesus. But he was in another form. Right? The Holy Ghost was talking to John. But he that sent me to baptize with water, the same said unto me, Upon whom thou shalt see the Spirit descending and remaining on her. Man? You. The same as he which baptized with the Holy Ghost. You say, oh, that's too close. No, it's not close enough yet. It is not, we are not getting close enough yet. So let's look in the future home real quick. We'll be done in just a few minutes. <clears throat> the prophet of God said, here comes God down upon his earthly tabernacle. Jesus in the descending out of heaven. Jesus was baptized and went straight away. Now watch. When he met the prophet, the word comes to the prophet. And he was the word, and the prophet was standing there denying all their denominations and everything. And when he seen the word, the word came right to him. See that, you say, we were talking about the other day about getting the new birth in the Sunday school, uh, Bible study class. When you see the word, the word comes right to you. See, when you, when you, you make up, uh, you made a statement up here, Sister Lily, you made a statement. We all heard it, didn't we? Amen. So did every demon in hell here. And the head demon himself heard it. You say, he's in church. He gets here before you do. And leaves after you leave. Or maybe some of you leave with you. So um, when he's seen the word, the word came right to him. How you, got, how you know you got the new birth? Because what's inside of you will come right to the word of God. 
It will not go to anything else. It will go to the Word of God. Not a catechism, not an Apostles' Creed, not a tradition. It will come to the Word. The Word will come to the Word. And the prophet was so shocked. He said, I need to be baptized of thee. Why comest thou to me? He said, Suffer to be so, for thus it becometh us. We know the message to fulfill all righteousness. I am the sacrifice. It must be washed. So he washed him or suffered him. Then he went up out of the water. I saw heaven open. The prophet saw it. He saw the heavens open. Now watch. And I was talk talking about this last Sunday. And here comes descending out of heaven a form of a dove and a voice saying, Hold on a minute. Brother Brown, you're misquoting the word. Because that's not what he said in the Bible. Because I just read you what he said in the Bible. A form descending like a dove said, This is my beloved son in whom I'm pleased to dwell. That's all it said. But watch a prophet. He knew it had to deal with that flesh. This was the Son of Man fixing to start the Son of Man message. And here he comes, descending out of heaven, a form of a dove, and a voice saying, This is my part of the earth. This is my part of the earth that I have redeemed. And out of this, oh, you're getting, you're getting too far off, brother. From this part of the earth, I will redeem the rest of it. How do you think redemption comes when Jesus is not here? It comes to you. The bride. The bride. You're going to extend eternal life. Part of redemption, so much a part of redemption, you are. To the world, we're redemption. Amen? Amen? Come on, I'm not getting an amen out of that. We are redemption to this earth. Amen. How are they going to get it? Hey, there's millions going to get redeemed by you or you or anybody else. Cup of water in my name. Amen. Change my tire on the side of the road. Open the door for you. So who's that coming from? I, we know that's coming from God, but where's he at? He's inside. But he's coming, working through you. Yes, sir. That's why that Brother Branham says the seed life has to come through the body. Somebody with the seed, not that was born with it. Because remember, even Paul, that's my whole point. You take the Apostle Paul, great apostle, right? Wrote 80% of the New Testament. Got it? The man got knocked off his horse one day. Got smoked blind one day. Wait a minute, great man. He was going to kill Christians, actually. Great man. He had to go and wait for three days in a house. And God goes and speaks to the seed life that was in a nice. Why didn't he just say, Paul, you always was. Open your eyes, blind dummy. No. Somebody had to bring him the seed. Right. Anas, go talk to this guy. He's like, whoa, he'll kill me. Jesus said, oh, I mean, well, God said, oh, oh Anas, you're going to find him pretty humble right now. <laughs> He's probably sore from getting knocked off the horse. And, oh, I, I kind of blinded him a little bit so he wouldn't get, run off. <laughs> and I put him in a room. I want you to go lay hands on him so he can get the Holy Ghost. Yes. Yes. Don't tell me that you don't have a connection with redemption. Why did he say, I'm nice, you got to go pray for Paul to get the Holy Ghost? Scales came off his eyes, and then God started working with him. I mean, why didn't he just knock Paul off the... Listen, Paul was laying on the ground saying, Lord, he knew it was God. <laughs> laying out there in the desert, on a, you know, his horse probably on top of him. Why didn't he just say, oh, I'm in the message now. I'll just start writing the Bible. You see how God works? Amen. Right? I'll, I'll just start writing the Bible. Give me some paper. I'm going to Antioch. I'm going to these places. No. He was blind for three days. 
When Ananias prayed for him, the other thing we hear is, is Paul had to go back to the back side of a desert Come on. Right. Yeah, right. Right. to listen to some tapes and read some books right. and listen to a five-fold ministry. But when he comes out, he meets Peter. And having the same Holy Ghost, they're preaching the same message. What's the problem with us in the message? Why can't we preach the same message? Right. I will redeem the rest of it, for he is my word made manifest. What are you? You're his word made manifest. And the whole world, I spoke it into existence by my word. Now, why did he speak it into existence for me and you? <coughs> And Satan has held it as all this time, but I've come to redeem it. So much of it was made as body, and I'm coming to dwell in it. Let's go to Luke 4. We've got two more points, and then we'll be done. Jesus being full of the Holy Ghost. Wow. He's ready for his ministry now. Because there's a part that's being quickened in his life. Listen, Jesus didn't need the Holy Ghost. Okay? Like me and you need the Holy Ghost. Everybody got that? Okay. Just want to explain that. Jesus didn't walk, as some people said in the message, that he walked 30 years without the Holy Ghost. No, he was born Emmanuel, God with us. And that incom it encompasses every title. He just had to get to a certain age to fulfill that title. Had to get to a certain age to fulfill that title. Had to get a certain age and do a certain thing to fulfill this title. Everybody good with that? Amen. He, like I said, he just didn't wake up... And, in the Bethlehem and go, I'm the Redeemer. No, he was going, ah, I need some milk. Right? Because he hadn't come to his position. Well, that was God. I just read you the quote. Crying in a manger, that was God. But now he's come to a position. He's come to the 30 years of age. He's come to a place to where God can now use that flesh to do something. And being 40 days tempted of the devil, in those days he did eat nothing. Now don't tell me that wasn't God. 40 days, he didn't eat nothing. And in the South, nothing means nothing. Okay, nothing. Or we say nothing. They don't mean nothing. Them people from Ohio, they're different. They're just a little bit different. They put all them little vowels in that we don't. Yeah, I don't put them, I don't, we, don't, we don't even play with them vowels. We just shove everything together. G yet? Being 40 days tempted of the devil, in those days he did eat nothing. And when they were ended, he afterward hungered. And the devil said unto him, If thou be the Son of God, command this stone that, he, that it be made bread. Now remember... Jesus, Brother Brown tells us that Jesus had three pulls in his journey. We talk about the third pull. Three pulls. First pull, second pull, third pull, right? Yeah. right. Well, let's look at this. This is three times that the devil's going to talk to him. And he's going to say, it is written that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. Okay? It says, it is written. Look in your Bible. It says, it is written. All right, watch. And the devil taking him up into a high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. And the devil said unto him, all this power will I give thee and the glory. Sounds pretty good, doesn't it? For that is delivered unto me and to whatsoever I will give to you. In other words, if thou wilt worship me, all shall be thine. And Jesus answered and said unto him, get thee behind me, Satan, for it is written, thou shalt worship the Lord thy God and him only shalt thou serve. Now, in Brother Brown's first pull and second pull, it was the healing campaign, right? And the hand, then the speaking, right? Or the, the, the discernment. But now watch this. <clears throat> Brother Richard Douglas preached this several years ago here, and, uh, and I brought this to his attention, so he's preaching a little bit different now. And he brought him to Jerusalem and set him on the pinnacle of the temple. Listen, Satan didn't have a problem going to church. He took him to Jerusalem and put him on a temple. And set him on a pinnacle of the temple and said unto him, If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down from hence, for it is written. He shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee. 
And in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest at any time thou dash thy foot against the stone. Jesus had had enough. Yes. He was fixing to administer the third pole. He didn't say it is written. He said, I'm talking to you. See, he was quoting the Bible. It is written. It is written. It is written. But when he come to that third pull, he said, it is said. I'm talking to you now. Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. And when the devil had ended all his temptation, he departed him for a season. It is written. It is written. It is said. He said, I've had enough. He said, I'm administering the third pull on you. I'm not saying this in the third person or second person. I'm telling you, what was Brother Brown's third pull? Speaking squirrels. He didn't say, don't, no, don't, no, don't, no, no. He said, you say where you want them to be. Well, bro, well, well God, I, you say. He said, walk out on that limb. Stop right there, I'll shoot that one. Walk out on that limb, I'll shoot that one. Creative power by the third pull. And here was God saying, all right, Satan. It's said. I've had enough. When are we going to do the same thing? See, we can say it is written. We can say it is written in the future home. Page 24. Hello, somebody. But when are we going to say, Satan, I say unto you, you leave my kids alone. You leave my family alone. You leave this alone and that alone. Sure, it's great to be under the pulse where it is written. That's okay. Quote him the word. But you know what? If it's just a quote, Satan would just stand right there just like he did with them first two. He was still right there. But when, but when that voice came out and Jesus answered and said, I said, I've had enough of this. Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Leave me alone. And guess what? He left. Now he left for a season. So be careful. He'll leave forever. He's going to come back. Everybody all right with that? Amen. Let's read this and then we'll close right here. Uh, sisters, go ahead and get everything ready. Uh, I know they're down there watching. <clears throat> and if any of you need to go help, we're going to sing a couple of songs before we... Um, we got a lot of food down there. Please eat all you want to eat. All right, let's go to Luke 4, verse 1. And Jesus, well, we, I'm sorry, let's go to Luke 4, verse 16. It continues on. And when he came to Nazareth where he had been brought up, and as his custom was, he went to church. Didn't I just? And as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up for to read. He wasn't just a bystander. He was a participant. But watch this. This is what I love. And there was delivered unto him. Now, remember, you and I know about this book. We know it's not just a scroll. The book we're talking about is the word. All right. But now there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah. And this is the way it happens there. They didn't have books, right? Because even if you read it in the original Greek or Hebrew or whatever it is, it says scroll. They didn't have books like we did until like the 15, 1500s. But it was a scroll. Like we were talking about the seal, you know, the seal. All right? They handed it to him closed because it said he opened it. He opened the book. He looked down in that book and he saw himself. Brother Wade, what are the seals? Christ, right? Amen. We know that. It's Christ. We know it's got all the symbols and all, but it's Christ. But where? 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 Christ out yonder somewhere? Christ over in the desert somewhere? Christ over in the, this church and that? Uh, the Bible says Christ in you. That's where you're going to find him at. But look, when he opened the book, he found a place where he was identified. Amen? The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. 
Wow. Because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel. He has sent me. Look how personal. He sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captive and recover sight of the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And what did he do? He closed the book. He said, you're not going to understand me until the end time. But when I come back, I'm going to come back with an open book. And you're going to not see just me. You're going to see yourself. You're going to see you are going to do these things. See, he, he, listen, God's the only one who can open a book. Why didn't they hand him that scroll open? He had to fulfill everything that we believe. The denominations handed him a closed book. The priest, the people that didn't know who he was, the people that really never knew who he was. Why? Because the book was closed. But he opened that book in their presence and told them who he was. Me. Me. I. Me. To preach the acceptable year of the Lord. Then he closed the book and what? Give it back to the church ages. Right. Yeah, right. right? Give it back to the church ages. And he said, I can't reveal myself like that through the church ages because I'm the son of man. That was the literal son of man standing there with that book in his hand. Amen? Amen? Just like in Revelation 5, that was the son of man standing there with the book in his hand. The lamb took the book. And this mighty angel that came down from heaven in Revelation 10 with the book open, it was in his hand. The Son of Man. But he closed the book and gave it back to the minister and sat down. The eyes of all of them that were in the synagogue were fastened upon him. And he began to say unto them, This day. Can you say that? This day is this scripture fulfilled in your ears. Every time you hear and something's quickened of this open book, this day, this scripture has been fulfilled. The Son of Man has spoke to you through the Word. And all bear him witness and wondered at the gracious words which proceeded out of his mouth. Look, all this great, mighty, Man standing there, they denied his virgin birth. Is this just Joseph's son? Is not this Joseph's son? And he said unto them, you will surely say unto me this proverb. I'm going to read you this, and it's kind of comical. Under this proverb, physician, heal thyself. No, a physician heals other people. Whatsoever we have heard done in Capernaum, do also here in thy country. And he said, Verily I say unto you, no prophet is accepted in his own country. Now here's the sort of man talking. Even Brother Brown said that same thing. Because in Jeffersonville, he was just Brother Bill. They, they knew he had a good ministry, but they didn't know who he was. But I tell you of a truth, many widows went to Israel in the days of Elias, when the heaven was shut up three years and six months, when great famine was throughout all the land. But unto none of them was Elias sent save that one woman. You know what he's telling them? This wasn't sent to you. Because after we get finished reading this, they almost threw him off of a cliff. He said, I'm not sent to you. I'm sent to a widow. Now, remember what the widow woman was. He's talking to Jews. The widow woman was a Syrophoenician woman or a from Serapath, and she was a Gentile. Elijah was sent to the Gentiles. He's telling them, this has nothing to do with you. When the heaven was shut up three years and six months when great famine was throughout all land. But unto none of them was Elias sent, save unto Sarepta, a city of Sidon, unto a woman that was a widow. And many lepers were in Israel in the time of Elias, or Elijah, the prophet. And none of them was cleansed. Now, Naaman is what? He's a Syrian. He's not a Jew. 
He's telling them exactly, I am not. In other words, whatever this is I just told you, it's not for you. Because the rest of that, I didn't put it on there to save time. The rest of that is they perceived that he was talking about them and they run him out of the city and put him on a cliff and was going to push him off. That's how mad they got. You know what? They got just a little bit of revelation. If they'd have known really who he was, they'd have said, God, forgive me and save me. But that wasn't the time for that. Now, what about me and you? Are we fulfilling the scripture? Let's stand. Are we fulfilling the scripture? Say amen. Amen. Right or wrong. Right or wrong. We're fulfilling the scripture. But there, could you imagine? There stood Jesus, and they handed him that scroll. I believe if I'd have been there, I'd have started crying. Because I'd have said, God, that's you. And you're opening that book just for me. I'm not opening it for you, the Jews. You're opening it for me, Lord, a Syrophoenician, a Syrian, a, a, a Gentile that's just not worthy to have all this. But you know what? It won't make us mad. It makes us glad that God give us an open book, that God give us a time to where we can see him in his fullness. Now, listen, this is the time of the fullness. This is not part truth. This is the fullness time to know exactly who this son of man is. And we'll get to it a little bit later. We're going to talk about the headstone. Because <coughs> that was what was rejected, was the full headship of the word was what was rejected. Right? Jesus took him back to Scripture. But remember, that headstone didn't get wiped away. He just came back down here and became the chief cornerstone, right. which is a little bitty pyramid right here. And he started building that foundation. By the roots. Because that's where the fruits are. Amen. Let's sing a song. God bless you. Love you with the love of the Lord. Enjoy your food. We'll pray over the food before we go. But let's sing a song so they get everything ready. Visitors go first. And then take the young children. Paul, that's not you. The young children. Sorry. <clears throat> and people without red shirts on. That takes you all the way out. Okay? And then the rest of you get in line. But, but just... Uh, we thank Brother Dale for letting us do this, for having let, us being able to do all this and being able to, uh, to stand here and preach the Word of God and all of our brothers too, the same thing. And to have a good place that we can go to that we don't have to uh, uh, worry about uh, what the weather is outside. It's just nice to be comfortable. I like to be comfortable and then you get comfortable around the Word of God. Amen. Amen. You get comfortable around the Word of God. See, that's when you can really feed on it. Amen. Let's sing us a song. I bless your name. I bless your name. I give you your name I bless your name we're the only people that know what that name is the only people that know the full name of the Lord Jesus Christ where he's at what he's doing <clears throat> Paul and Silas pray that night We get bound with chains and we quit singing. No, that's the time to start singing. That's the time to start rejoicing. Raise them things up. It'll pull them apart. In Jesus' name. Sing it to him. Oh, I bless your name. I bless your name. Thank you, Lord. I give you
confess that he wants his son to be protected, Lord. And we pray in the name of the Lord Jesus as we bind together, Lord, that you'll protect this young man in his endeavors to do what he does, Father, and not just this day, but every day afterwards, Lord, he puts that helmet on, Lord. We pray that you'll protect him in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. It's good. Don't worry about it. see the lights of that city we'll just sing the chorus I like that song because we're close Have you ever been to a place to where you drive around you drive at night and you look at the horizon and you say that's where I'm going because I see the lights well this light this light of this town or this city is the brightest in the world it's called my future home and your future home and I believe we're at that horizon to where we can see the glow of that light. I can almost, almost see the lights of that city. Keep going. Almost see the lights of that city. I see them gathering. Thank you all for coming. Thank the, the brothers and sisters from Ohio for making the trip. We pray that they felt at home because we sure felt at home with them being here. Amen. And we thank you for all things. We're going to pray over the food. Like I said before, let the kids go and the company. And then there's plenty to eat and plenty of time to eat it. So don't worry about it. 
Let's bow our heads. Remember, Brother Aaron, Wednesday night, be speaking for us, and Brother Dutch next Sunday. Just pray for me as I travel on Thursday morning and be gone until about Tuesday of the next week. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for this day that you give us. We pray, Lord, that something's been said about you, Lord, that we pointed the people to Christ, to Lord, to the Son of Man that now is so prevalent in this end time, Lord. You're in a body of believers, Lord, not just to be here as bystanders, but Lord, as you said before, that we can speak the word and things will happen, Lord. You told us that we can move a mountain if we just say it. Lord, no stipulations behind that at all. But if we say unto this mountain, be removed, and doubt not in our heart that we can have what we ask. Lord, we can almost surely see the lights of that city. We know it's coming close. We know it's coming fast. Lord, I pray that you'll get the ones in that needs to be in, Lord. Be with the ones, Lord, that came here from Ohio, Lord. We pray that you'd sanctify them, Lord, and may see them again in another couple of weeks. I pray that you give them traveling mercies and keep them strong. Strengthen them, Lord, in, the, in the, what they need to do, Lord, in the future and keep going, Lord, upward towards you, Father. We ask you to bless the food, Lord, and sanctify it to our bodies. May it be helpful for each one of us, Lord, and may we eat, Lord, as we eat, Lord, in fellowship with each other. May we remember that it's you, Lord, that's give us all these things. Father, bless us and forgive us of our sins and be with us in the furtherment of this service. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. See the lights of that city. I see them gathering.